miss this video on matrices and determinants and miss guaranteed plus 12 marks in IIT JEE mains. If you think that matrices and determinants something which is very crucial for you, spend your next 15 minutes on this video. We'll discuss 15 high impact questions which JEE asks repeatedly every year. So if you want maximum output with minimum input, this video isn't a choice, it is mandatory for you. Look at the first question. It says A is positive and discriminant of this quadratic is negative. So when you find out the discriminant, it will be 2B square whole of square of 2B minus 4AC and that discriminant is negative. So when we see that discriminant of a quadratic is negative, we say that it will be an upward facing parabola lying above the x-axis because its discriminant is negative because A, the coefficient of x square was positive. Now, what are they saying that this discriminant is equal to what? Some options are given. How do we solve it? First of all, let's expand this determinant. So we are given this determinant. I'll first of all subtract x times rho 1 plus r2 from rho 3. So x times of rho 1 plus r2 from rho 3, x times of rho 1 plus r2 from rho 3 will give me 0 and 0 in the rho 3. If I'm updating this data in the rho 3. And of course, when you do the same operation here, this also gets changed to this. Now, if I expand it along with the rho 3, plus minus plus, minus plus minus plus minus plus. So negative of this, negative of this into ac minus b square i hope you know how to expand the determinant and with that this is how i write it that negative gets consumed or absorbed by ac minus b square it becomes b square minus ac now we know that this quadratic expression always lies above the x-axis which means this will always be positive and b square minus ac when multiplied by 4 of course i need to divide it by 4 becomes the discriminant of the quadratic which we were told is negative so if the quadratic is always positive for all the x which are real but this discriminant is negative so positive into negative will give you a negative expression and accordingly a correct option can be marked Remember this, this is a very simple question. Two things you need to remember here. Whenever you are given that A1, A2, A3, these are the numbers and they are written in a determinant. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A8, A9. Then always remember this determinant will always be zero. Remember it as a fact, as a property, as a short trick. And remember one more trick. If A1, A2, A3, A and R and GP, then their logarithms will be in an AP. So this is a determinant where terms in AP are written. Its value will be zero, option D. Now let's look at the next question. It says this is a matrix and this is its square. And we need to figure out certain values. You know, if matrix are to be compared, they are compare, compared with respect to their corresponding values. So here we have A square, which is given as alpha, beta, beta, alpha. Although A is given as A, B, B, A. So I can find A square by using this matrix multiplication. Confirmability for matrix multiplication is in short. The first row into first column. So A into A plus B into B. That's A square plus B square. First row into second column. So A into B plus B into A. The same I'll do with second row first column, second row second column. And this is how I get the matrix multiplication. If we are told that these two matrices are equal, I'll say alpha is equal to a square plus b square and beta is equal to 2ab and accordingly you can mark the correct options. Look at this example. Complex numbers are merged with mat matrices and determinants. 1 omega omega square are the cube roots of unity and we need to figure out this determinants value. So if I simply expand it along with the first row, 1 into this minus this minus this into this minus this plus this into this minus this. I hope you know how to expand a determinant. When you do that, of course, you see omega to the power 3n minus 1 minus 0 omega to the power 3n minus omega to the power 6n. Omega cube, we all know as per complex numbers is always 1. So omega to the power 3n, omega to the power 6n or omega to the power any multiple of 3 will give me 1. So 1 minus 1, 0. 1 minus 1, 0. Answer is 0. Let's look at the next question. It says system of linear equations, this, this and this has a non-zero solutions. If you pay attention, they are homogeneous system of linear equations. 
they are homogeneous system of linear equations and they have a non-zero solution. Non-zero solutions means they have a non-trivial solution. Non-trivial solution is found when delta is zero. What is delta? The determinant of the coefficients of x, y, and z. So the coefficients in those equations of x were 1, 1, 1, of b were 2a, 3b, 4c, of c were a, b, c. If this determinant is pretty equal to zero, I need to find a relation here. I can find this determinant's expansion with a short technique which is called Saras rule. What does Saras rule say? Repeat first two rows. I have written them. And then take this product 1 into 3b into c, then 1 into 4c into a, then 1 into 2b into a minus this, this and this. When you do that, you get a relation which concludes 2 upon b is equal to 1 upon a plus 1 upon c. Do you remember sequence in series? If that is so, you claim that a, b and c are in HP. A classic example of converging two concepts, sequence in series and determinants. Look at this question. Functions, quadratic and a lot is merged with determinants. This is what you are given as f of x. You are also told that this is minus 2. And then you're find out, then you're supposed to find out the polynomial fx. Some of you might start expanding it straight away, but here use some properties. If I add all the three columns and write them in the first column, I'll get 1 plus a square plus b square plus c plus 2 times x in this all the three rows. With that, I already know that a square plus b square plus c square is minus 2. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0, so this is 0. So I'm left with 1, 1, 1 in the first column and the other two columns remains intact the way they are written over there. The second thing I do is from row 1, I subtract row 2. So from row 1, I subtract row 2 and from row 2, I subtract row 3. From row 2, I subtract row 3. When you do all this, what you finally get is this determinant. I hope expansion is pretty simple because first column has two terms zero. This is one. So plus minus plus minus plus minus. This should be plus one into this minus this. So this is basically x minus one whole square. This is clearly a quadratic, which means degree should be two. Next question. There is a matrix A given as this matrix 10B. 10B, mind you, is given as this. Where I'm told that B is the inverse of A. B is the inverse of A. Then alpha could be what? See. We know that 10B was this, so B should be 1 by 10 times this matrix. We know that B is inverse of A, which means the product of AB should be an identity matrix. With that, this is your matrix A, this is your matrix B with this 1 by 10. And if I take their matrix multiplication, it should be an identity matrix. Now the catch is don't multiply this at all. What you need is you need the value of alpha. So here, I'll take this thing. I'll take the first row and third column. So first row with third column and multiply it gives you this entry. I hope you know how to do it. 2 minus alpha plus 3. 2 minus alpha plus 3 divided by 10 should be equal to this 0, which gives you the value of alpha, which is 5. Isn't it interesting students? Now the next question A is given as this. If you are thinking that this is an identity matrix, you are wrong. Identity matrix is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is not what we are given and it is minus one of course so it is clearly not an identity matrix so if you are thinking that a is a zero matrix a is a null matrix no for a null matrix all the entries should be zero option d is discarded so let's figure it out first of all this is what i'm given as a in the options i'm talked about a square so when you take a square a is multiplied with a so i hope you know how to do the matrix multiplication row with the column so when you do this matrix multiplication you get a square as i a square as i, which means option A. Along with this, you can do one more thing. You can find out its determinant, which is of course minus one because it is a triangular matrix. It's product of the, it's of course, it is it is not a triangular matrix. So its determinant can be found by simply expansion, which is turning out to be a non-zero value, which means it is invertible. Its inverse can be found, which means, which means option C, option B are incorrect. Only option A is correct, which we have already figured out. Now, moving ahead with the next question, what does it say? It says that A and B are square matrices of size and cross and brilliant. Then we are told that A square minus B square is this, which is not true for all the matrices. Do you remember that? In matrix, commutative property does not hold true. A, B is not equal to B, A for matrices. Do you remember that? So with that, if I am given that A square minus B square is equal to A minus B times A plus B, then it will be true only when A, B is equal to B, A. 
If that is so, then only you can have a square minus b square is equals to a minus b times a plus b. If a b is equal to b a, because that in that case it will become zero and it will vanish. So for that, a b should be equal to b a, which means option b needs to be marked. Moving ahead with the next statement, vector a is given as this, vector b is given as this, where a and b are natural numbers, mind you, everyone, and we are told. In all the options that there should be something for which a b should be equal to b a so first of all let's find a b and b a so i hope you do matrix multiplication a b so a b should be this this then this this then this this and then this this so through this you can find a b matrix multiplication and then b a this row this column this row this column this row this column this row this column through this you can find matrix b a but we are told that a b and b a are equal if i compare them this a and this a is great same but this 2b is equal to 2a if 2b is equal to 2a that means a should be equal to b but a and b can be any natural number so if you put a by 1 if you replace a by 3 if you replace a by 5 there are infinite possibilities where i can create a and b the matrices a and b the capital a and capital b which means there exist infinitely many b's such that a b is equal to b a because if you keep replacing different different natural numbers in place of small a and small b you will keep getting infinite b's i hope you got that now moving ahead with the next question what does it say that is a very good classic example where it says a square minus a plus one is equal to zero or it is null matrix it is not zero don't assume it like that it is a Null matrix, it is O basically. This is a question based on characteristic equation or matrix polynomial. If you rearrange it, you can find out its inverse within seconds. How? Let's have a look at that. So here, first of all, this is what I'm given. I keep this I on the left hand side and I'll bring this A square minus A on the right hand side. I can do that. Now, what I do is I multiply both the sides by A inverse. So I into A inverse will be A inverse. A into A inverse will be identity matrix and A inverse into A square will leave me with a from this matrix polynomial or characteristic equation or Kylie Hamilton method, we can crack that A inverse is identity matrix minus A. Isn't it interesting students? Moving ahead with the next set of questions, we are told this system of equations which are written somewhat like this, all are with equal to alpha minus one, that's the constant term, has no solutions. I hope you remember if there are infinite solutions, which means delta, delta one, delta two, delta three, all of them should be zero. If it has no solutions, then delta should be zero, but at least one of delta one, delta two, delta three should be non-zero. If it has unique solutions, that means delta should be non-zero. These three cases, I hope you remember through Kramer's rule. Now, if I go back to this, it has no solution. So first of all, delta should be zero. What is delta? The coefficients of x, y, and z, the determinant which you create. Alpha, one, alpha, one, alpha, one, 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 alpha. If I expand it with the Saras rules, the short technique, I'll say alpha, 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 one, 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 one. That's alpha cube, one, one. Now, minus of one, alpha, one, 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 alpha, alpha 1 1 so that is alpha plus alpha plus alpha so alpha q minus 3 alpha plus 2 this should be 0 if i make it satisfy by 1 hit in trial i see 1 minus 3 plus 2 that's 0 so 1 should be a root of this cubic equation which means alpha minus 1 will be a factor of it so if i have found alpha minus 1 as one of the factors and if i divide this by alpha minus 1 i'll find the second factor which should be a quadratic which by polynomial division you can find as alpha square plus alpha minus 2 this is a quadratic splitting the middle term by this two roots will be found from here which will be 1 and minus 2 so alpha could be either 1 or minus 2 but there is a catch there is a catch what is the catch if i replace alpha by 1 if i replace alpha by 1 1 minus 1 0 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 so that is homogeneous system of linear equations which means it can have infinite solutions which means alpha cannot be alpha cannot be minus alpha cannot be one this should be discarded now i'm left with one choice can alpha be minus two let's try it so if i replace alpha by minus two what i need to ensure is that one of delta one delta two delta three should be non-zero so let me find delta one how do we find delta one to find delta one the coefficients of x should be replaced by the constant terms which is alpha minus one what is alpha minus one if alpha is minus two alpha minus one will be minus three so minus three minus 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 three and the other two columns remain intact the coefficients of y and z and when you expand this determinant this is non-zero and if it is non-zero which means it has no solutions because delta is zero and delta one at least one of delta one delta two delta three is non-zero and that's exactly what we are seeing right now look at the next question it says a b c be any real number suppose that they are real numbers x y z not all zero not all zero mind you the language so here these are the some equations we are given now if i get back to this if i rearrange all the three equations i see them 
three linear equations in three variables, but all of them have constants zero. If the constants are zero, they are representing homogeneous system of linear equations. And I am told that they are satisfied by x, y, z, which are not all zero. So if all the x, y, z are non-zero, then we say that it has a non-trivial solution. So whenever you are given a homogeneous set of linear equations and if it's told that it has non-trivial solutions, that is possible only when delta is zero. What is delta? Coefficients of x, y, and z. You write that determinant, you put delta is equal to zero. By Sarah's rule, I can expand it. So minus one, minus one, minus one, C, A, B, B, C, A, minus this, this, and this. I hope you are understanding how interesting the Sarah's rule is. Through that, when you rearrange the data, you get the value of this expression, which is one, which is the answer to the question. Moving ahead with the next question, it says, A, B, a square matrix of of all whose entries are integers. So there is a matrix which has all the integral entries. Then which of the following is true? We are told that determinant of A is plus minus one, great. And we are asked about A inverse, great. First of all, we need to understand that if there is a matrix A, which has all the integral entries, its cofactors will also have the integral entries. Do you remember that? Because cofactor is basically what? The cofactor, I hope you know, if I wish to find the cofactor of this, then it, this minus this, that will give you the cofactor, which will be an integer. So cofactor will have all the entries to be integral. Next part, if I am told that determinant of A is either plus one or minus one, that means determinant of A is not zero. That means A inverse exists. A is an invertible matrix. With that, if I find A inverse, it will be adjoint of A upon determinant of A. What is adjoint of A? Transpose of cofactor of A. Determinant of A is plus minus one. Cofactor has all the entries integral. That transpose will also be integral. So integral with a plus minus will be integer, which means A inverse will have all its entries to be integral. With that, you can mark the correct option that yes, determinant of A is plus minus one, then A inverse exists and all its entries are integrals, which means option C can be marked. Look at the next question. It says there is a determinant A and A square or determinant of A square is 25. We know that if determinant of A square is 25, I can write it as square of determinant A as well, A to the bar n determinant or determinant of a to the power n is same as for the properties of the determinant then we are found we are asked to find the value of mod alpha if it is a triangular matrix i hope you know it very clearly if it is a triangular matrix its determinant can be found with the help of taking the product of the principal diagonal elements 5 alpha 5 that is 25 alpha so determinant of this a will be 25 alpha but Determinant a square is given as 25. So 25 should be equal to 25 alpha whole square. By solving this, I can find alpha is plus minus 1 by 5. We were asked mod alpha, which should be 1 by 5. Option A needs to be marked. Did you understand how interestingly we did all these questions and we could revise this entire chapter? With that, let's meet in the next video. Thank you so much.